We're going to go to Ephesians this morning, back to Ephesians. And we're going to start in verse 5, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 1. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us in an offering and a sacrifice for a God sweet smelling aroma. Amen. Amen. All right. How many of you know that you're a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you know, I smelt some of you and it wasn't sweet smelling. Amen. <laughs> But, you know, spiritually, we were sweet smelling to the Lord. Amen. Now, when we started off, it told us what were we supposed to be imitators of who? Of Jesus. All right. How do you imitate somebody that you don't know? Right. It's a little difficult to be an imitator of somebody that you don't know. Right. So in order to imitate Jesus, in order to be Christ like. What is one of the first things we need to do? We got to get to know him. Amen. All right. How do you get to know somebody? Spend time with them. Amen. You guys remember back to the dating days? Can you guys remember back to when you were dating? Some of you like, no. <laughs> no please don't make me go back there. <laughs> I got to tell you, praise the Lord, those days are past for me, amen. I'd hate to be dating today. Can you believe that? You know, the uh, different friends I have, single for whatever reason, and you got all these different online sites and this, that, and the other thing, and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love you, honey, amen. But listen, when my wife and I, when we first started dating, you, you know who I wanted to be with? her more than anybody else I wanted to be with her and you know when we first started dating she didn't have the same feelings for me y'all believe that she didn't want to be with me like I want to be with her all the time so she, she wanted to go be with her friends once in a while can you believe that but I wore her down That's right. You see, in order to build relationship, you have to spend time. You have to spend time. You, you know, my wife and I, we spend a lot of time together getting to know each other. And she still married me. Amen. I have a, a buddy of mine. He was dating a young lady. They dated for about a week, a week and a half. And next time I saw him, I go, hey, how's so-and-so? Oh, we're not dating anymore. I said, really, what happened? And you know what he told me? He goes, she told me when she got to know me, she didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, there's revelation in that, amen? <laughs> but I wanted to be with my wife, my girlfriend at the time. I wanted to build relationship with her. You understand what I'm saying? I wanted to understand her, what she liked, what she didn't like. You know, and around this time of year when Christmas would roll around, you know, one of my great pleasures back dating was to buy, buy her <coughs> Christmas gifts and do things and figure out what it was that she liked. Amen. Amen. You know, the Holy Spirit will do that for you with Jesus. Amen. You know, the Bible teaches us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. And in order to not grieve him, we got to get to know him. And in order to get to know him, you got to spend some time with him. And you say, well, it's not a real person. Well, yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. Spiritually, it's a real person. Now, now listen, <clears throat> it's hard when you're first starting out and wherever you are in your Christian experience, it's hard when we're starting to place the proper emphasis on things of the spirit. Okay. One and praise the Lord. It takes time, right? 
You, you, you know, there's a, a belief that love at first sight. You know, that's not a true statement, right? There is no such thing as love at first sight. You know what there is? Lust at first sight. There's a huge difference between love and lust. Amen. Most relationships built on lust don't last. You guys understand. Now, listen to me. This is like love 101 today. Love is a decision. Let me say that again. Love is a decision. It's not an emotion. Society tries to teach us that love's an emotion. Love is not an emotion. Lust is the emotion. Love is a decision. And love only comes through time. Love only comes through building up trust. Love only comes once you've made the decision, my wife and I, I've decided to love my wife. Amen. 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 And I love her as much or more today than when we first met. Amen. Amen. But now listen to me. There are days I do not like my wife. <laughs> because she said what a loser I was. There are days that my wife does not like me. But do not confuse like and dislike for love and not love. You see, I chose to love my wife. My wife chose to love me. Amen. All right. Now, listen, you have to get to the point you choose to love Jesus. You know, when the apostle, not not the apostle, when when <clears throat> John the Baptist when he was in prison, you guys remember the story when he sent the disciples to go see Jesus and they go up to Jesus and they ask Jesus, are you the Messiah? Are you him? Are you the one? Or do we need to look for another? All right. Now, listen to me. If you'll backtrack that story, he had already baptized Jesus in the Jordan. Right. Yes. yes. And the Bible says, and the spirit came down like a dove. You realize it wasn't a dove. It was the Holy Spirit. Right. And there was a voice from heaven. And what did the voice say? This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. All right. Now, John the Baptist witnessed all of that that transpired. He also read in the word when, when the Bible talks about visiting widows, orphans, and people in prison and doing things. And God works. You understand what I'm saying? And so now he found himself in prison. Contrary to what he thought he should or shouldn't be. You understand what I'm saying? Are you listening to me this morning? Listen, we're headed someplace. Stay with me. So now his, his followers come to Jesus and say, are you Jesus? What do you mean, are you Jesus? You know, you know that you know that was Jesus. You were there when it was Jesus. Why did he ask, are you? Because he was offended in prison. Are you with me this morning? So when Jesus addressed them, he said to them, listen, stick around, look and see what we do. And they said, blessed is he who's not offended in me. Amen. Listen, how many have you ever been offended in Jesus? Be honest. If you don't raise your hand, you lying dog. Come on now. Listen. Just like a loving relationship I have with my wife, you know, I've offended her. She's offended me. Just like I don't understand how she does what she doesn't. You understand what I'm saying? You realize your relationship with Jesus is no different than any other loving relationship. You are not always going to understand what Jesus is doing. Are you with me this morning? You're not always going to agree with what Jesus is doing. But let me ask you, if do you throw away the relationship? No, no. no. you see, the relationship has to be bigger than the offense yes. or it don't work. If your offense is bigger than the relationship, you lose the relationship. Yes. That's why I say the greatest atheists that are out there today were once believers. But then God didn't work or it didn't happen for them the way that they thought it should. Through disillusion, through poor teaching, through prayer that wasn't answered for whatever reason. And now all of a sudden they're offended and hurt. So they flip a 180 and now there's no such thing as God. You understand what I'm saying? Don't fall into that category. 
So how do you stay out of that? You stay in the word. You understand that, listen, although bad things happen, Jesus is still in control. Amen. Although I don't get or understand things that I have to go through, Jesus is still in control. You see, we need to be imitators of God through the good and the bad. You understand what I'm saying? There are times in your life when things happen you are not going to enjoy. But if you'll stay close to the Father, the physical pain will pass, but the spiritual pleasure and enjoyment will not leave you. Your spirit man will stay refreshed and at peace. Your spirit man will keep focused on the relationship and moving forward, although your carnal man may struggle a little. Let's be honest, okay? Everything that we go through is not always fun. But everything that we go through is purpose-filled if your life is in His hands. Amen. Amen? Are we making sense this morning? All right, now let's jump over to verse 8. Verse 8. It says, For you, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. You understand that? You see, there's two families, the family of darkness, the family of the light. All right. This is the family of darkness. This is the family of the light. Are you with me? So if if, if, just stay with me a minute. (laughs) You all in darkness because you're on Wayne's side. When you, when, listen, when you get saved, when you get saved, you are transformed, right? Out of the family of darkness and into the family of the light. So we're not going to, but if we had everybody on this side, go over to this side. Now, you understand what I'm saying? It's really that simple. It's as simple as switching from one side of the church to the other. Spiritually. When you get saved, you were once a child of darkness. In the family of the devil, when you get saved, you're a child of the king. We're in the family of the light. Amen. So once we get over here in the light, what do we need to do? (laughs) Some of you can really got to figure this out. Amen. We got to go back to the imitators of Christ. All right, because see, getting over here, it didn't, it, we, all we had to do was ask and receive, correct? Amen. Right? People say, well, well, Pastor, I need to get myself ready to get saved. <laughs> really? All right. If you're all dirty and you need to go take a shower, do you get ready to take a shower? Or do you take the shower to get off the dirt? Amen? Amen? You see, getting saved gets off the dirt. You you don't get ready to get saved. You can't position yourself to be saved. There's not a prerequisite that you need to follow to get saved. In order to get out of the family of the darkness and into the family of the light, you just ask. My Bible says, confess your sins, believe on your heart that Jesus is who he says he is, and you shall be saved. Right? All right, but now listen, once we get saved, all right, now we're over here and we're saved. Once we get saved, what do we need to do? Amen. Amen. We have to start being imitators of Christ, imitators of God, and living and working according to kingdom principles. Amen. Amen. So listen, my old way of thinking, stay with me, my old way of thinking needs to be transformed, right? My old way of speaking, right? There's a lot of my old ways that I need to do what? Get rid of. You know, I was talking with a young man the other day. He recently was saved. 
and he was saying he's struggling by hanging out with his friends and, and whatnot and doing things. I said, well, listen, you need to get some better friends. Amen. Right? <clears throat> if, if you struggle with alcohol and you've gotten saved and you're giving up alcohol, is it a good idea to go bar hopping? Is it a good idea to keep liquor in your home and in your cabinet? No. What should you do if that's a challenge for you? You get rid of it and you stay away from it. Amen. Because now we want to be Christ-like. All right. Now, now I ain't preaching against alcohol. Okay. I'm not. My, my Bible doesn't say don't drink. It says don't get drunk. Right. That's what the Bible says. You know, I know a lot of good Christian people that like to have a beer. A lot of good Christian people that like to drink wine. Listen to me. That's between you and the Lord. Come on. Amen. But I will tell you, it says not to get drunk. Amen. Now, for me, I don't drink. I don't, I don't like drinking. To me, it doesn't taste good. It just doesn't taste good. And people say, well, Pastor, you have to acquire a taste. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You didn't like it either. But you drank it and you drank it and you drank it and you drank it. Until now, you like it? Really? Don't make sense to me, amen? See, that's why I drink sweet tea. Praise the Lord. That just tastes good the first time, every time, all the time, amen? Right? It's your sweet tea out. God is good. But listen, he expects you. He expects you to make change. Amen? All right. Are we making sense this morning? Yes. All right. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Mm -hmm. For the fruit of the spirit is in goodness, righteousness and truth. Now, listen to me. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. <laughs> Whose responsibility is it to find out what is acceptable to the Lord? Mine. Thank you. It's my responsibility. It's your responsibility. You have to. My Bible says to seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Do you realize that on your on your road to being saved, your opinions are going to change about what's right and wrong? Isn't that awesome? So some of us who've been saved a really long time. We need to remember that once in a while for somebody who's been saved a short time. God's still working with them. Amen. God's still working with them. And, and so what might be wrong for Alicia might, might not be wrong for me. Or what might be wrong for me might not be wrong for Alicia. So how about we worry about ourselves? Amen. Amen. How about you read the word and you start applying what the word says to you? Amen. Amen. You know, I believe there's a scripture in there that talks about, you know, getting the, the, the log or the tree yeah, out of your own eye before you worry about the, you know, the little itty bitty sliver in somebody else's. Amen. You know, most of us, if we'd spend a little more time trying to get our personal life better, we could worry a whole lot less about somebody else's challenges. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's a good God. He's a loving God. You know that last song, I surrender all. That's what it takes. It's a I surrender all. And all just means that. Praise the Lord. Confirmation. That's funny. I could have swore I turned that off. Amen. I know I did. I don't know how that came back on, but anyways, praise the Lord. <clears throat> That's all right. God's good. But listen, when you surrender all, all means all. That means all of my good habits, all of my bad habits, 
all of you understand what I'm saying? And, and if there's areas in your life that we're struggling with, if you'll learn to surrender them to him, you know what he'll do? He'll coax you, he'll encourage you, and he'll help move you and change you through. Amen? God does not leave you orphaned and abandoned. Amen? His whole purpose and goal is to make your life better. I guarantee you there is nobody in your life that has no agenda other than to make you better more than the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. does for you. Hallelujah. All the Holy Spirit ever wants to do for you and with you is make your life yeah. better. You, you know, when we're, when we're young, we have a lot of misconceptions. Well, I don't want to really serve the Lord because in serving the Lord, I'm not going to be able to do all the fun things, you know, growing up. Well, well listen to me. I've served the, the Lord my whole life, and I'll guarantee you I have not missed out on fun things. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things I've, I have missed out on. I've missed out on, on, on being so sick because I got so drunk the night before. That boy, wasn't that fun? Amen. <laughs> Are you with me? You, you know, I've missed out on not being able to find my car for a week. <laughs> I missed out on that. Amen. I know for a fact who my children are and how many of them I have. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. You see, I missed out on a lot of things that some people call fun that only add misery, torment, problems, confusion, challenge. You understand what I'm saying? You see, we have this misconception that serving the Lord keeps us from having fun. Serving the Lord keeps you from ruining your life. Amen. Amen. Serving the Lord brings forth all the fun you'll ever need. Amen. All the peace that you'll ever need. Amen. 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 And it comes with this. No regret. Amen. 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 Being an imitator of God and learning to grow in grace and wisdom doesn't take things from you. It brings things to yes. you. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm too old to fall on the ground anymore. Amen. It says, now listen, in verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Now listen, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Amen. You understand what he's trying to teach you? <clears throat> God only wants what's best for you in spite of you. Amen. Amen. In spite of you, God wants to bless you. No matter what it is that you believe, what it is that you're going through, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit only wants to make things better. That's all. And if we'll finally get and understand to the I surrender all part, I surrender all. All means all, every part. That means every word, every attitude. That means you understand what I'm saying? All of you. All right. Now, listen to me. How many perfect people have there ever been? One. One. Only one. Amen. Sorry, sissy. Only one. <laughs> Only one. His name was Jesus. Amen. He was a perfect man. Amen. The rest of us have some issues. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on now. The rest of us have some issues. Amen. We have some challenges and we have some problems. We have some things that we're working through. All right. So let me ask you what you're working on today. You understand what I'm saying? What you're working on today? Because, listen, you know, those saying Rome wasn't built in the day. Your life, your Christian experience isn't built in the day. It's built over a lifetime. Amen. My Bible says to leave an inheritance for my children's children. Amen. The inheritance that I want to leave is a Christ-like lifestyle. Amen. The inheritance that I want to leave to my children is the understand and know that the closer they'll get to the Lord, the better their life will be. Amen. 
that the more that they'll trust and obey the Lord, the more that all the things that they want and desire, God will bring to pass. You see, for some of us, we struggle so hard in surrendering all and serving the Lord because we think God's not going to give us the things that we want. We think God's not going to bring to us the things that make us happy when it's the total opposite. My Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Do you realize that God cares about the little things in your life? He cares about your dreams, your goals, your wants, your desires. As a believer, do you understand that most of the dreams and the goals that you want are placed there by God? Amen. So why would he give you goals and dreams if he didn't want to help you? Is this making sense to anybody this morning? Because these are the kind of the challenges and the questions that, that, that I get or that you have. Because we don't really understand who Jesus is. You understand what I'm saying? You see, we really don't get what it means to be saved. We focus way too much on most of us on thinking what I have to surrender, what I have to give up in order to be saved. When I'm telling you, you know what you have to give up? You have to give up fear. Come on now. You have to give up anxiety. You have to give up regret. You understand what I'm saying? But you know what you get in return? Peace. Peace that passes all understanding. You get a father that his whole purpose is to help you achieve your goals. His whole purpose is to help you be a better person, to ensure that you are successful in life. Amen. Does that sound like a good trade? Yes. Th does that? You see, that's what Jesus has for you. That's what God has for you. Don't be afraid of the I surrender all. Yes. Don't be afraid of changing to make your life better. Yes. And don't worry about what you think God's going to expect out of you. Trust me when I tell you, he is not going to expect anything out of you that you can't give. Yes. And he is not going to ask you to do anything that he is not willing to give you a desire to do. Amen. 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 You know, I've shared with all you guys, listen, being a pastor, that was never on my horizon. Yes. Yes. Come on now. I didn't, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But when the Lord started working with me and he started dealing with me, my whole attitude changed about it. And those of you that know me have heard my story. But listen, I wouldn't change it for the world now. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> When God calls you to do something, he'll give you the desire and the love to do that. You understand what I'm saying? And then your life, your life is filled with purpose. And if being filled with purpose brings peace. You see, for most of us, we're always struggling, trying to find and feel this little hole, this little gap, this little something that's not quite right. Well, the little something is the I surrender all. The little something is that little spot where the Holy Spirit says that's the last little thing that we need to sweep out so that I can encompass all of your heart and bring you all of the purpose, all of the joy, everything that comes with it. Amen. But now listen, I'm speaking of peace, purpose and joy and understanding. But you got to understand that I'm not telling you that your life is going to be problem free. Right. I'm not telling you that you get saved, you surrender all, and tomorrow there are no more challenges. We're just going to hold hands. We're going to sing Kumbaya. No. Get ready for a relentless attack. Amen. Get ready for the, for the devil to try to see really what you mean. But understand Listen, greater is he that's in me. His peace he gives me. Focus on him. Stay on him, his word. Be imitators of Christ, followers of Jesus, and learn and understand that circumstance does not dictate who I am. You understand? 
What I'm going through doesn't dictate my, God's love for me. You understand? What I don't understand does not dictate how much God loves me. You, you, you see where we're going here? You see, it's not. It's not something that you just get a hold of and it makes sense. It takes time. It takes time. But it's just like a lot of different things in your life. You see, there's a lot of things in your life that you really don't understand how they work. But they know you, you know how they work. Amen. All right. You, you know, how many of you go to your light switch and you turn it on and the lights come on? You understand how that works? Flip the switch. All right, but let me ask you, how many of you could actually build a generator? How many of you understand the principles? You understand what I'm saying? I don't understand. I'm an electrician, okay? I understand how it got there, how to get it there, but there's a whole lot of things about it that still baffle me, amen? You know, electricity does strange things once in a while, amen? Yeah, it's worse than a woman, amen? Because, listen, when electricity puts a slap down on you, it's painful. Amen. But, but listen to me. There's things of the Lord that you just have to turn the switch on and know the light's coming on. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's, it's like the key to your car, right? When you put the key in the ignition and you turn the key, what do you expect? Unless you drive a Ford. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see that Ford had that new truck with the tailgate bumper that has the two seats built into it? They said they, it's got that so you can sit and wait and watch for the tow truck to come. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. Amen. <laughs> but listen. A lot of us might not understand air and fuel and pistons and lifters and rockers. You understand what I'm saying? But I understand if I put the key in it and I turn the key when everything's, it's going to, you understand what I'm saying? That's how things work with the Holy Spirit sometimes, guys. You have to understand. You just have to stay in faith. You just have to know that you're not going to know and move forward. Amen. 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 Don't get so caught up in what you don't know. Focus on what you do know. Amen. And you know God loves you. Amen. You know he just wants his best for you. And if we're going through something that doesn't seem that way, we just have to trust to him that that's the way that it is. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Are we making sense this morning? Yes. You know God loves you, right? Yes. He only wants his best for you. But listen, we got to make some change. Amen. We got to do our part. Get better. Move better with him and listen, really learn and understand what it means to surrender all. Amen. Surrender all. I give you all, everything. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen.